Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here. Welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about the standard template library, specifically in our deep dive of the algorithm library. So make sure that if you haven't already, check out my webpage here over at courses.mshaw.io. And you can check out some of the other courses if they're interesting, but you can track your progress here on the C++ page because again, there's going to be a lot of these algorithms and videos. So again, you want to make sure that you catch them all and are able to track your progress. But with that advertisement out of the way here, let's go ahead and talk about the algorithms library where we have left off. Now, in particular, we've been talking about non-modifying sequence operations. So that is algorithms that don't change uh, the actual underlying container, your vector, list, deck, whatever data structure that you're using. And we've talked about some things like, for instance, uh, in previous videos, uh, mismatch, for instance, for finding where the first mismatch is in a series of, uh, or in, in a sequence when comparing two sequences. So now we're going to continue talking about comparison. And where I first want to start us off is by talking about equal. So I think I've got to scroll down here a little bit here. And this is actually filed under um, comparison, I believe, which is an appropriate spot to have it. Comparison, operations, and equal. OK, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. And basically what we're doing is determining if two sets of elements are the same here. OK, now let's go ahead and take a look here at equals and see what we got here. So equal, it's going to return a Boolean value, or really we want to be paying attention to sort of C++ 20 stuff. So it can uh, do this with const expert if we have two known sequences at compile time. And basically we're just going to take an iterator for the first range, the last range, and then the first of the uh, next element. Now there's a bunch of different overloads for equal. And actually I want to talk about some of these where they might be interesting to check out from a just pragmatic standpoint. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Uh, but let's just go ahead and start with this first one here uh, and take a look here. So what I've got, uh, and in order to compile these, again, I'm just going to be using uh, the standard uh, compile that we've been using here. Um, so there we go for our empty program. But let's just go ahead and start off with uh, this here. So let's just go ahead and store our result. Um, and that's going to be as a result of running std equal here. And again, I'm going to take the start of our uh, sequence here, start of our vector, and the end of our vector. And then let's go ahead and, uh, oops, and that's going to be v1, the end. Okay, so that's our first sequence. And let's go ahead and start from v2, beginning, and then capture that result here. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this overload. And let's go say a result, uh, or let's go say uh, is equal. And let's print that out here. And we'll get a one if this is equal, which is corresponding to the value of true or zero if false. And if you want, you can go ahead and read about, uh, we actually haven't really talked about streams so much on this series, but um, there's a little flag you can set if you want one to print out to uh, true for Boolean types there. Uh, so anyways, let's go ahead and run this here. Uh, and oops, one little uh, typo here, missing paren from the error message. Uh, and it looks like they are equal. Okay, so by default, this is going to start from the begin, beginning and move to the end here. Okay, so let's look a little bit more at equal, get used to reading this stuff here. Um, and basically, uh, let's see which version we're using, uh, version number one. So I'm paying attention to uh, what happens here. It returns true if the range from the first thing to the last thing. Again, so it's always useful to draw these out. So I have some range here. What did we have? One, uh, two, and three, something like that for V1 and V2. Uh, let's do it in a different color here. Uh, we also had one, two, and three. So we have our first here, our last. That's where we are uh, iterating to. Although remember that our iterator is actually pointing like somewhere here uh, at the end. Uh, and then we have our other first here. Okay, so just doing the sort of element by element uh, comparison here. Okay, that's the idea here. All right, uh, and uh, that's how it works here. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the complexity here. And again, this is just returning true or false values if the ranges are equal. Uh, so that's easy enough to understand. Um, and generally speaking, um, what this complexity is, is O of n. So if you have a container of 50 elements, we say that's n elements or 50. Um, and that's uh, basically applying the equality operator. That's what it means by application of the predicate uh, over and over and over. So for something simple like an integer, again, this is going to be a very much constant time. 
um, check to see if two things are equal. Um, and I mentioned that in the last video, but again, just to be explicit, we're running whatever our uh, operator equal, um, you know, uh, is here. Okay, so operator, uh, oops, let me write it properly in C++ equals like this. Okay, whatever that function is. Now for primitive types, again, if it's just integers, we're just, again, doing a simple compare. So however expensive this is, and this is constant time for integers, so for, you know, ints or other, you know, primitive types, that's uh, the expense here. So O of N times O of one. Okay. That's the idea here for the complexity. So this is, this is a linear, but again, if you have like a, a data structure that compares a bunch of graphs um, and you have tons of those graphs stored, again, that could be more expensive, right? Determining if something is equal has some other probably non-constant uh, factor. Okay. Um, there are some other notes here. I think um, if the length is not equal, then by default, you get uh, false here. So let's actually go ahead and try that out here um, just to show that. Uh, so let's go ahead and do one and three here. Uh, so, you know, by default, uh, are these equal? No, because again, uh, they can't be. They're different sizes. Okay, so um, this function itself is pretty well defined from that respect. Um, but we can do some other things here. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other uh, overloads that are interesting. Um, let's go ahead and look at one that has first, uh, last, first, and last. Okay. Um, so basically what that means is, again, within this container, I could do something like uh, this here. So I can actually specify the uh, last here, okay? And why that might be useful is that I don't want to look at the entire container, right? If I want to change this so that I start from the, you know, this position and just look at this range, um, I can do that, okay? That might be useful um, in the instance, again, that you know uh, you have a container, for instance, that is a different size, okay? So if you know what this size is, for instance, and you want to just see, like, Hey, are these sets for, you know, uh, from this range here, uh, comparing to this range, are they equal, right? And maybe you're just ignoring the first element for whatever reason. Okay. So you do have that ability, that flexibility. Um, and again, this is a nice thing about the algorithms library, because if you're doing this by hand, you're writing lots and lots of, um, different comparison, different types of loops here when you just have them all in these overloads here. So anyways, let's run this, make sure it works, uh, just the same. Uh, it is equal here. Um, and again, let's go ahead and try that little experiment here where this time I am going to make the sizes uh, different. Uh, but for whatever reason, I'm going to start off, uh, you know, one past uh, my beginning here. And effectively for this test uh, that I'm doing uh, by testing, you know, just this range and this range here, uh, they are equal. OK, so something interesting that you can do there. OK. Uh, now let's go ahead and look at some of the other um, overloads here, because I think this is interesting and sometimes just scary for beginners to look at, but we want to, um, you know, make a little bit more accessible for you. <laughs> but let's go ahead and just take a look at uh, some of these overloads have binary predicates. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, again, that's the test for equality. So again, if I look at this, um, as mentioned here, you know, this operator equals here is basically a function that's taking in a left hand side of the equation, a right hand side of the equation, and seeing if things are equal. Okay, now for our primitive types, things like integers and so on, uh, this is going to be trivial that they're, um, you know, equal. Um, but for what about for other types, or what if we want to change the behavior? Okay, so let's go ahead and just start uh, first and foremost um, in this example here. Um, and let me actually capture these in. Uh, maybe some unit tests or something, because uh, I think those might be uh, useful for us to reflect on here, uh, just because we're going to have a bunch of these. Uh, so let's go ahead and just call this uh, test one. Uh, I'll go ahead and put this here. Uh, let's go ahead and move this to uh, test uh, zero. Yeah, let's just have a couple of these functions here. Uh, just I want to move some stuff out of the way here for this next one. Uh, and let's create our uh, test three. And it's easy to see all the overloads as well. Test uh, two, though, in our numbering system. OK, so let's go ahead and um, write our own. Uh, and we'll 
let's go ahead and run these here. Test zero. Uh, like this. There we are. One and two. Okay. Uh, so for test two, what I want to do here, uh, and I need to uh, add our little, uh, there we go, fix, is add our uh, predicate here. So b2.end and then uh, our function. So there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. We can write, uh, this is as a lambda function. Usually folks will just write these in here. And by binary predicate, that means, you know, two uh, parameters here. So int uh, i, int j, okay? Uh, what are int i and int j here? Well, that's effectively, you know, this element here. Uh, I'll just go ahead and label this i and this is j. And then the next iteration, right, this is my new i and this is my j. And it's running this code on, you know, these sets of elements. And then it's running it on these sets of elements, okay? So I need to provide a binary predicate. And predicate's just another word for a test, which means, you know, true or false. Okay, so two parameters uh, return true or false. Uh, that's the idea here. So let's go ahead and look at this in terms of uh, some code. And basically what I want to do here is just return i equal to j. Okay, uh, so this is what it's already doing, but we're going to build this up to another example here. Uh, if I run this here, oops, well, it looks like I got to... Do test zero, one, and two. What did I do here? Ah, just an extra uh, I here. Um, these sequences are all currently equal. Okay. Um, oh, and what did we do here? Uh, let's make this one a little bit interesting just for capturing our uh, narrative, what we did previously. There we go. Uh, okay, perfect. Um, or, oops, I guess I uh, reverse those around here. There we go. Sorry, I'm just rewinding our code a little bit here. Uh, just I want to do a review so you have everything at the at the very end. But, um, you know, this is the, the same exact test that it would be doing. So this isn't very meaningful right now, this binary predicate. But let's take a look at an example that might be useful. Something that you might do in practice here. So let's give ourselves a uh, test number three. Uh, let's just go ahead and do this and let's go ahead and work with a different data type. I'm going to go ahead and give us a string up here. So make sure you have that if you're following along. And instead, what I'm going to do here is let's create two strings here. Uh, string S1, uh, you know, hello, something like that. String S2 and maybe something like this here. Okay. Uh, and let's, you know, let's do the work of making these uh, something like this. All right, um, and let's run uh, test three here. Okay, I'll comment these other ones out here just so they're not uh, distracting us for now. Uh, there we go, all right. And uh, first I'm gonna compile this and let's ask ourselves if this compiles here. Okay, so I'm gonna be looking at every individual character uh, of our type, which is a string here. Okay, so can I just use an integer here? Okay, maybe they'll do an implicit conversion. Well, let's see here. Um, and that does work, okay? Um, since I know these are characters, and again, this is where you have to be a little bit careful and why this might be useful. Again, if you're using different types of strings, like a wide character string or something, um, you know, you might want to change these around. I'm just using a basic, you know, ASCII string, and I want to comp compare these two. Okay, so uh, this is a little bit more correct. Same result here. So these strings are clearly not equal. Hello and uppercase hello, okay? And that's gonna be the default behavior in C++ when we're comparing two characters, right? Are they exactly the same character? But there might be instances where you want to, for instance, return uh, and do something like this to upper and see if the case doesn't matter, okay? So example, where the string comparison is not case sensitive. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and run this one. Are these strings equal? Well, yeah, for all intents and purposes, right? It's passing our test. We're looking at each individual character. I'm making them uppercase uh, by default for the comparison. Again, this isn't modifying my uh, actual containers in any way, right? If I were to print these out, um, but it is changing our test. And this might be something that you wanna do. For instance, if you're building a login system, user types in their name and you just, you know, do 
uh, a comparison to see if that name is in your database or or something, you know, some entry that you're looking at, right? You might just convert everything to uppercase because case doesn't matter. Um, so that's just an example where it's useful to know about how to use some of these predicates. And again, a nice thing with the library just having these built in um, functions with several overloads that work. All right, folks. Uh, so with that said, I'll go ahead and leave it there. Let's do a recap as promised. That's why I spent some time breaking this in a function, uh, different functions. But we looked at equal, which was basically just doing an element by element comparison with uh, a pair of iterators and then at least one other iterator for the second sequence that you're looking at. Of course, we can look at um, different ranges by using two different pairs of iterators. So that's a nice overload. Um, we can specify our own comparison, as was demonstrated here with this binary predicate. We learned what that was. And we saw a use case where it might be useful if we want to make things uh, case, uh, you know, uh, insensitive, I guess. Um, so not case uh, sensitive. OK, and that was the idea uh, that we highlighted here. OK, uh, so folks, with that said, again, check out the lesson on courses.mshot.io or some of the other algorithms ones, and hopefully you're starting to get a sense of this. But with that said, we're going to continue looking at a bunch of these again, just because they're useful to know about. Once you know about them, I think it'll change how you write your C++ or even in other languages, you might lean on some of the standard libraries um, until you need maybe you know, ultra performance and that kind of stuff. But anyways, folks, with that said, thank you as always for your time and attention. I'll look forward to your discussions below and I'll see you in the next one.